I'm Ashton Addison for BlockWest Capital, an investment pitch media and crypto coin show. Today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Najib Awini, the marketing and tech advisor for Partija Blockchain. Najib, welcome to the show, and it is great to have Partija back on again. I'm excited for this discussion. Thanks for the invite, uh, Ashton. I'm pleased to be there today with you. Likewise, I would love to kick off our talk with just, first of all, hearing a little bit about your background in the blockchain space and how that led to you working with Partija Blockchain. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm coming from the cybersecurity space uh, with 20 years of experience around this space. Uh, I used to work in a large uh, digital identity program when I was working in a previous life, let's say, in France, mm -hmm. with large corporations like Thales and working in digital ID system. Uh, working with digital ID system gives you a, an overview of, of personal data, privacy, and security. And, mm -hmm. and going, going with large program like the uh, De Department of Defense in US, mm -hmm. uh, French passport, you know, I was leading the French biometric passport and yeah. the I identity program for Morocco government. Uh, you, you, you make aware that uh, privacy is really a concern when you, when you want to, to centralize a large database of identity. So exactly. then I specialized around this space and smoothly go to the blockchain because I would like to, to, to go for a decentralized way to store identity. So this is my, my jump to the centralized world, to the decentralized world. Very cool, Najib. Great background. And there's definitely a lot of privacy aspects that still need to be integrated uh, into the blockchain space. You know, there, there's a lot of initiatives, but I don't think there's any foolproof solution right now. And I know Partija is working on some other security and privacy aspects with their layer one protocol. Um, I would love if you could elaborate just for the audience that hasn't heard of Partija blockchain, just what is Partija blockchain and an overview of some of the main solutions they're trying to drive into the market. Yes, so if you look the the blockchain ecosystem today, uh, you will find a lot of blockchain uh, layer one, layer two solutions uh, that that focus on two two very important things: that smart contract capabilities and scalability. But the privacy aspect is, let's say, not really focused for this kind of blockchain. Even for Ethereum blockchain, this is not addressed today well uh, with a large platform. Um, and Partizia would like to solve that, let's say, uh, remaining topic. And, and the, the, the team around Partizia is really specialized on what we call multi-party computations. So it's mm -hmm. a breakthrough mathematical uh, techniques that allow, for example, two parties to compute on data without disclosing their data and, this, and, the, and their uh, the computations. Uh, if you take an example of, between you and me, Ashton, we can say we have together a salary and we don't want to dis disclose the value of salary. So mm -hmm. what we will do with the, all the people around the, the table, we will just make a computations without disclosing the salary, but we can compute the average of the salary of people around the tables. Mm -hmm. So these techniques will really help to do private computation on data that we don't want to disclose. So mm -hmm. Partizia uh, platform is really want to address this point, this aspect of privacy with blockchains, because we know that blockchain is public ledgers. That's really why blockchain exists today, to have transparency, to have a settlement of transactions that can be verified by multiple nodes. Um, but we can do that with what we call private computations. And really, mm -hmm. Partizia blockchain would like to address that to focus on use cases like the digital identity system I mentioned before. Um, let's say I want to be able to verify my identity to a party without disclosing too much detail. Mm -hmm. I want to control what detail I give to the party. The party just to need to know what they need to know. For example, they just need to know that I'm uh, an adult. They need to know that I'm living in Switzerland. They need to know that I have more than 18 years old, and that's it. They don't need to collect all the private data uh, and make, like we know, uh, excessive collection of personal data that could lead to massive data breaches. Mm -hmm. So Partizia blockchain has two aspects, the scalability also, like other blockchain try to address, but one unique aspect uh, Partizia is focusing is privacy. Mm -hmm. And we focus on, on, on social impact project Myself, I'm involved in many humanitarian projects. We are mm -hmm. soon uh, announce a very major uh, uh, solution we do for NGOs because we would like to focus on social impact and uh, social goods. Uh, if you look, for example, 
identity system today, they are all centralized system. Mm -hmm. And Partizia will address that issue with a decentralized identification of users, of refugees, of people, uh, to keep their personal data private with this MPC techniques. Definitely, yeah, great uh, info, Najib. And with the secure MPC multi-party computation, I've heard of that as a, a privacy functionality in blockchains before. Uh, but I'm curious, you know, how easy is that to implement into the blockchain and then into the ecosystem where you know there's a lot of people using Ethereum or there's other blockchains and the privacy function is only, I'm guessing, it's going to start by focusing on, on Partesia, it has MPC, but really the rest of the industry would need to catch up to implement these kind of yes. privacy techniques. Yes, yes, that's, that's really the, the challenge, in fact, to, uh, to, to make this interoperability between the public ledgers and what we call private ledgers. Partesia, in fact, address that with two layers. One will be public layers, which will be public smart contract, public transaction that will be visible to all, all people around the planet. So this is a classical ledgers that is needed in a way to give the transparency. But we need a second layer. The second layer will run private smart contract and private transactions. Mm -hmm. Why we need these two layers? We need to be complete. We need to complement the, the, let's say, the missing, the missing part of other blockchains. But we need to be compatible with other blockchains that give, give them the way to write transactions that can be hidden to other parties. And when mm -hmm. I say hidden, we don't want to disclose, for example, when you do an auction, you don't want to disclose the price of the auction. We want to disclose the winner of the auctions. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need this private layer and we need this private smart contract executions. Mm -hmm. So these two layers will help to get the bridge to get, let's say, the other blockchains. And we have a unique capability that is called bring your own coin, Björk. So if you mm -hmm. look uh, the way Partizia works, you can take your Ethereum coin, you can take your Cardano, whatever coin you have to the public ledgers and make private transactions on the second layer. That's mm -hmm. the unique capabilities. Uh, in fact, do not other blockchain addresses. They, they have their own token for their own system, ecosystem, that make difficult to make interoperability between blockchains. And if you look at the landscape of blockchains today, and I've been in this space since several years, like the fa last five years when I was started to work on, on, on Bitcoin. Um, now I think you get lost with all these blockchains every day, every month. Mm -hmm. We have a new blockchain with a new token, uh, utility token, new smart contract in the language, new, uh, new capabilities. But they all in fact reinvent the same uh, things uh, and they do not uh, address the really essential point when you work in blockchains is transparency, scalability, but as I said before, privacy. Yeah. And if you bring privacy to the blockchain, then you have a winning solution. You have something that make blockchain secure, make blockchain transparent, and make blockchain confidential. Because you need confidentiality if you work in the enterprise. Not mm -hmm. only you need confidentiality when you work, for example, on digital identity system, healthcare system, and also auction. We talk about NFT. NFT, you do auction. You don't want to disclose uh, the amount of money you have spent to buy an NFT, NFT co co collectible, uh, because at some point you want to keep this data private to you, private to the winning uh, transactions. Mm -hmm. So Partizia would like to address that. This is why the, the blockchain is not, let's say, today in, in mainnet, because we have to focus really to address these challenges and to make it really secured. And we have right now an ongoing security audit to be sure that we have not missed uh, an essential piece of the of the puzzle. Definitely. Thanks for that background, Najib. And that sounds really interesting about the layer two that you were talking about. And from what I got there, is it true that you can essentially like wrap Ethereum or other coins into the layer two and that makes it a, a private asset and then you can trade or do DeFi uh, and, and laking, lending, staking, things like that? Um, with assets that aren't on Partesia, is that possible? Yeah, that's the concept called bring your own coin, a Bjork, mm -hmm. you know? uh, This is the essential piece of Partesia blockchains. Uh, I cannot tell more on that topic because I, I, today I didn't experience myself 
uh, these functionalities, mm -hmm. but it's coming around uh, soon. So I prefer to to not discuss too much technical detail. It's better better to wait the the first smart contract that showcase that capabilities that uh, developers are focusing today. Uh, what I can disclose today is we are developing, uh, for example, an applications that is, uh, you know, you know, in Switzerland, we have done this health pass, you know, like all the country mm. that develop yeah. healthcare pass, uh, COVID pass. Mm. So Switzerland has developed one, which is fully open source, fully mm. open source, wow. fully, this, fully, uh, let's say, capable of, of, of not giving too much personal detail. Mm -hmm. And we have added on top of this Swiss COVID passport, the capabilities to make proof, what we call zero knowledge proof, that you get mm -hmm. a vaccine without disclosing your uh, personal detail, without disclosing uh, the, the name of the vaccine. We just need to know, mm -hmm. are you vaccine or not? And mm -hmm. this proof has been written on Partizia blockchain and executed via a smart contract. Mm -hmm. So soon, this application will be published in open source, as we did for the Swiss COVID passport and showcase the full capabilities of what we call zero knowledge proof. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, this case is really essential. If you look, uh, developing countries in Africa, they don't have a, a modern PKI infrastructures like we have in Europe to verify yeah. signature, digital signature. It's too complex because you have to have a, a centralized system again with a central si signing system. And this is where Partija really gives this, this value to, to such country or to such uh, use case. You don't need centralized authority to verify a proof. What mm -hmm. you need is a, a computation node that could be installed everywhere in the world. And this computation node will be able to verify that proof for you. Mm -hmm. And the coin that we, we use for that can be any coin to, to make the, the, the operate, to operate this, uh, uh, this node. So this is where this bring your own compatible capabilities mm -hmm. will in fact facilitate the interoperability of the ecosystem. And we would like to add, address that with bringing developers the tools and the development kit that help them to adopt Partizia blockchain smart contract, but also to make their application they have developed in Ethereum make zero mm -hmm. knowledge proof to the second layer of Partizia with these private smart contract capabilities, mm -hmm. keeping their original application running in Ethereum, but mm -hmm. have the bridge to the Partizia blockchain because we don't want to also reinvent the wheel. We want them to be able to run zero knowledge proof capabilities. And we provide that what we call MPC as a service layer. Mm -hmm. And this is the idea to give the other blockchain these capabilities that today they miss because they lack of, let's say, uh, privacy techniques. Uh, and to be clear that the teams are run Partizia is massive, you know, if you look the, the team around is, is, is a research more than let's say a thousand people research around that. So it's mm -hmm. not like invented in two years. It's not, a, it's really massive research around that. We have well-known professors working on it and it, it, the team is amazing. They really understand the, the uh, essential piece of, of, the, of the techniques, which is making private computation, private uh, uh, secret sharing, and also private transaction. Mm -hmm. Incredible, Najib. I think that's going to be very promising for Ethereum and having that uh, as a service where you can plug it into you know, the existing ecosystems. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. And you mentioned that the team uh, has been working on the protocol for quite a while. It's in the testnet phase. Can you talk about moving forward? You know, when are you anticipating a mainnet launch and you know, what are the next big milestones coming up leading towards that? Yes, today the, the team is really focused on this security audit, which is really, as I said before, it's an essential part of the project. We mm -hmm. don't want to learn something that has not been reviewed, but peer reviewed by expert. We have worked with one of the top uh, security audit firms on that. Uh, also peer review with experts. We work also myself, I'm based in Lausanne EPFL. I work with a uh, known professor uh, doing that for us also. We have also uh, expert around the space helping us to review the code, to review smart contract. We designed already first smart contract on testnet and we asked mm -hmm. the community to test this smart contract. Uh, as I said, we, we prototype uh, first uh, Elf Pass passport, which we give free of charge because it's open source mm -hmm. as an example of applications. 
So the mainnet, uh, if I cannot disclose too much, will be launched this year, Q4, maybe Q1, but Q4 is the focus. Mm -hmm. um, with, with, let's say, few applications to, to pilot the mainnet, to, to, to strive adoption of the mainnet. We also develop in parallel real applications. I can disclose two applications. One, it is my, let's say, my personal choice is an EID system, which will be used by Swiss Canton uh, to be used as really EID system, concrete mm -hmm. EID system. And if you know the news around Switzerland, Switzerland is really close to adopt a, a, cent a decentralized EID system uh, because Swiss, Switzerland is also decentralized. We have Swiss Canton in themselves, they can run a operator node, they can themselves validate transactions. So Swiss is really a small country, but we, already, we are already decentralized. Mm -hmm. So it could be a very interesting pilot for the community to see what we do in Switzerland. And then the idea is to scale for other, other let's say, example. NFT could be something interesting to explore. You mentioned DeFi. Uh, there is, I think, a limited use case, and we will let the community to define the use case. Partizia Foundations has developed a grant program uh, to help developers to develop, adopt, and make real concrete application around Partizia blockchains. Mm -hmm. So let's see what the community is doing around Partizia. Maybe we will have very interesting use case and applications around this MPC as a service, which is today unique uh, in, the, in the blockchain space. I completely agree. And I'm looking forward to seeing those applications roll out uh, and towards the mainnet launch. Uh, for the viewers that are looking to follow along, Najib, with uh, for towards the mainnet launch and all of these updates that are coming out, what's the best way for them to learn more about Partesia? So, in fact, if you want, there is a very interesting articles on the Medium page of Partesia. Mm -hmm. It starts with several parts. If you start, I recommend really to start from the part one, which mm -hmm. explains the overall uh, description of Partesia. Uh, so, this is for introduction for people to get into this MPC zero knowledge proof mathematical things. And if you look the, the Medium article from Ivan Damgard and Peter and Kurt, it's amazing evangelist. They have really uh, explained in a simple word what is MPC, multi-party computations. So I really recommend the Medium article. Then they can go, for people who are more, let's say, technical experts, they can directly go to the partisiablockchain.com website. They will find developers, a Git, Gitbook, the, the GitHub, also, they will look the uh, documentation around running a node, uh, setting a node on the testnet. They will get a lot of MPC token to evaluate the testnet. I recommend to, to, to try themselves to make some first smart contract. Uh, there is already one published smart contract, which is already running. Um, so the really introduction, medium article for non-technical people. And for technical people, they can go to the developer page mm -hmm. on partisiablockchain.com. Sounds great, Najib. I will leave all those links in the description box below. All the Thank best you. to you and your team moving forward with the Partesia launch, and let's follow up in the near future. Thank you, Stan, for your interview.